We're actually very close to the supply of water. We're the closest to the Colorado, and we're in its watershed. And the name of the city in Spanish translates into the meadows. So, but no one wants to spend a weekend in a bachelor's party at a place called the meadows, because it sounds like where you would gather butterflies or something, you know. Nobody's like, I'm going to go do the meadows this weekend. So, you know, Meadows Baby doesn't have the ring of Vegas Baby. So no one sort of looked at the fact that this was just a natural oasis. This was always well watered. In fact, when Elvis was dancing with Ann Margaret on this campus, when it was Nevada Southern, uh, we were on well water and on just the spring mountains. So the mountains to our west receive a snowpack. It all filters down and we tap it. And for, we had several hundred thousand people, but to go to two million, we needed to go to the lake. And we only use a tiny little fraction of that lake. We use about 3% of that lake. We only use uh, 300,000 acre feet a year. That's less than they send to Albuquerque. And Albuquerque is not, it's on the other side of Continental Divide and it's miles away from it. So we are closest and our water doesn't evaporate because we tap it underground. We actually reach under the lake with that new pipeline and pull the water out. So we could never run out of water because if the water ever stops flowing over the spillways at the generation plant at Hoover Dam, there's actually 15% of the lake left at that point. But we'd be under very severe restrictions because we'd want to build it back up so it could get to Lake Mojave and Lake Havasu because that's where it's tapped for Phoenix in LA. Yeah. And they get much more of it. LA gets, there are like individual farmers that get more than Las Vegas does. We make do off very little water and we recycle it all too. I've had, you know, friends come from places like San Diego and they wanted to see Hoover Dam. And they said to me, your lake's down. I'm like, that's your water too. They're like, yeah, I don't think so. I'm like, trust me, we're all drinking out of this thing, you know. So, you know, growth across the whole West, you know, faces a constraint on the Colorado supply. But if you keep using it more efficiently, there's far more water in the West than there is in, say, a place like Israel or Australia in certain parts of Australia, which is really arid. But they've created technology for using very little water in farming. And we use about 70% of the state's water in agriculture, and it counts for less than 2% of the state's GDP. And we use just a fraction of that for the tourist industry. I mean, you know, what's, how much water does it take to fill up a pool at a day club? Take the top 10 day clubs, take all of the taxation, employment, wealth generated off that. That's bigger than the alfalfa industry, which is using you know, the biggest share of water. So adjusting the way we use water to reflect economic output would give us a lot more supply. So you know, there's room in the valley. We'd run out of physical space before we'd run out of water. We'd, we'd go up against mountains and slope and federal land holdings and, you know, that would constrain us to like, say, three and a half million. But we're not, we're not there yet. You know, Salt Lake gets more than we do. Albuquerque gets more than we do. Denver gets more than we do. Wyoming farmers get more than we do. You know, don't look to Las Vegas to save the lake. The lake's got to get saved by others. We're not using that much of it. If everybody used the Colorado as efficiently as Las Vegas, the water would be flowing over the top of the dam right now and damaging it because we use that little relative to the number of people living in this valley and how much gross domestic product the region produces $110 billion a year in output off a tiny fraction of that lake. So I think that we could afford to have, you know, the lake's share, our share, uh, you know, uh, at this point, we're recycling virtually everything. But if we keep squeezing more of that out of it, we're kind of, uh, we didn't mean to be an efficient user. We'd love to party with it. We'd love to pour it in lawns and everything. But we've made a decision to live within the means of the valley. So we've switched our front yards to, you know, desert scape or rock. And the water companies paid you to do that. And we've gone much further along that path than other regions that are sort of abusers of the supply. But they've had rights to it since, you know, the 1920s because they negotiated it. And no one wants to break the compact. But no one wants to touch that. You know, you know, it's like one of the thorniest issues in the West. Remember, whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. So no one wants to say it. If the federal government enter, ever intervened, it would prioritize urban water use. Yeah. That would be, the losers would be agriculture. 
because uh, you can grow elsewhere in the country, you can grow these things. You know, there's a case to be made for California's agriculture as special, but you know, cotton and alfalfa and these kinds of crops that you're growing in the desert because you're so, you know, water rich in Phoenix because you've got the Salt River project separately from the Colorado supply. You already got more off the Colorado than we do. And it, a lot of it's evaporating in the deserts. And a lot of it is pumped at great energy costs. Like most of the energy off of Hoover Dam goes for just pushing the water to California. It's not lighting the strip. What's lighting the strip are coal fire plants north of the city. The strip isn't lit off the lake. Boulder, the city of Boulder, has electricity off the lake. But very few, and there's a little bit of electricity down to Laughlin and places like that. But very little of Nevada benefits from the hydroelectric. The hydroelectric is mostly pushing the water through a series of inclines uh, and pumping stations to get it to California and to get it to Arizona. Uh, so we're, we're right here. Yeah. You know, there's marine stores down the street. You can get a boat, there's a lake, you could park a boat, and get a dock space and go boating every weekend. I know people that do that. So we're not far from water. That whole idea is just erroneous. We were, look at the shape of Clark County. It looks very straight and angular at the top and then all of a sudden there's a shoreline well, that's a hint that there's water nearby. You know, nobody draws a little squiggly line for no good reason. You'd just be a little box. If there was no water, the, the county would be like a square or a triangle. But instead, you know, you see Lake Mead's shoreline in there. Yeah. As a company, we're very focused on sustainability as a core value. And my team's really focused on energy and water conservation. And so we spend a lot of time at the properties working with facilities teams or operational teams of, of hotel, convention, and other things on operational ways that we can save energy. And then we also work on capital projects that we can use to invest in more efficient equipment, fixtures, uh, and, or on the mechanical or electrical side that uh, might impact how we use energy and water. We're sitting in the park. We're looking at a water wall behind us. Uh, the park was really built as a very efficient way to use desert landscaping uh, to welcome people from the Strip through the, the area to T-Mobile Arena ultimately. And so we did uh, a lot of development in this area, but it was very sustainable. And so you'll notice that we're sitting in a area that's heavily shaded by acacia trees, mesquite trees, yuccas, things that are native to the area. Uh, and it's fed by landscape irrigation dripper systems. And so those systems are about 70% more efficient than traditional sprinklers. Uh, so this area uh, also harvested many trees that were in the area before. So we saved those trees um, uh, from the old construction site that was used to build city center. And we built them around uh, in the area to provide this kind of cool, nice environment. Yeah. We manage 10 wells uh, up and down the Las Vegas Strip. And they provide about 10% of our water for uh, primarily outdoor uses. And so we're looking at water walls, water features in general, landscape irrigation, um, and cooling towers. So all of that water uh, is very efficiently used as we've started to use more efficient cooling tower systems, optimize our buildings to provide heating and cooling in a more efficient way. And, uh, and our, our water features uh, reuse that water over and over again as they, as they operate. And you know, speaking of water features, I mean, I think the Bellagio is probably has to be the marquee piece. Yeah. Um, can you talk about the Bellagio fountains? I mean, for tourists that's coming here, they're coming to the desert. You know, desert's known to be dry, not have a lot of water. That's the perception. Yeah. Um, and they look at the Bellagio fountains. What, what can you tell them about the sustainability of the Bellagio fountain? We operate the fountains in a very efficient way. So we have very little evaporation off of the fountains because if it's too windy, too hot, we will cycle down or remove uh, some of the shows that we do because that we will evaporate some water in that case. But it's very uh, carefully operated in terms of how the water is managed. So that water also works with the Osho Theater. And so with that water also being well water, we're very efficient in how we use it. We, we don't want to pay for uh, any backup water. So exclusively well water is used for the, for the fountain. In total, Las Vegas resorts as a sum use only about 7% of the water that is used in the Las Vegas Valley. And the reason for that is that the water that we use in our hotel rooms, in fact, in your own homes that goes down the drain, ultimately goes down to the lake to Lake Mead. And we want that to happen because those return flow credits benefit the entire system. And so we call that non-consumptive water use. So um, what we do to impact that, we still don't want to use water if we don't have to. And so what we do is we use efficient, high efficient fixtures uh, in our properties. So our shower heads, sinks, 
toilets are all high efficient fixtures. And we you know, encourage our employees to do that in their homes as well. I think our company and our industry, you know, especially MGM Resorts, is really focused on being more efficient with resources in general. And so water and energy are primary uh, importance in the Las Vegas Valley. And so, you know, technology's caught up, um, awareness is caught up, and, and guests are, are also asking for these types of features to be added. And so, you know, we're able to tell stories about how efficient we are with water by, for example, building City Center as a lead gold building, a lead gold facility required, and uh, we went above the standard for efficient fixtures, especially in showers and sinks. Um, and, you know, as far as we know, no real guest impacts from doing that. In fact, positive guest experience.